But you still had to carry around those clunky tapes that degraded over time. Even the Walkman couldn't save the ill-fated cassette. Because in 1982, Sony, with some help from Philips Electronics, upped the ante yet again with the compact disc. For decades, we had wax and then vinyl discs, and then we saw the eight-track tape, which was eventually obliterated by the cassette tape. And as we come into the beginning of the 1980s, we're left with two common formats, the cassette tape and the vinyl LP. These were both replaced in the early 1980s by this, the compact disc. The CD is a total revolution, and it's a revolution for two reasons. First of all, the information stored on the CD is stored digitally, so that each time you play the CD, you're going to hear exactly the same sound. And the second reason it's revolutionary is because so much information is stored on the CD compared to a vinyl record. During manufacturing, billions of pits, or scratches, are pressed into the plastic in a spiral string. The disc is then coated on one side with so-called super purity aluminum to create a mirrored surface. A film of lacquer protects the aluminum and is painted with a label for the CD. A CD is read by focusing a semiconductor laser through the transparent bottom of the polycarbonate layer. Now the CD reader is able to tell the difference between actual mirror and scratch and from that decide what bits of information have been written onto that CD surface. Now the trick was to convince consumers to repurchase all their music on the new format. But as people heard it or visited with friends or somehow came in touch with CDs and the quality of the music and the amazing fact that it would always have this great quality, it got adopted very quickly.